Good morning. Welcome to my electronics playground. Today we're going to cover a feature of the Pico called a watchdog timer. It's a very cool feature, but most people just overlook it and don't even give it a thought as to what it's useful for. Uh, but here's how it works uh, essentially. Uh, it's a timer that you have to put, we'll say, time into it constantly while your program is running. If you fail to put time into it within a certain period of time, it will reboot the Pico and give it a fresh new start. And then it'll just repeat that over and over again. Now that is, of course, if your program name is main.py, meaning it will automatically load and run upon power up or reboot. Now you might be wondering why would I ever want to do that? Well, this type of feature is uh, important in uh, the industrial world. In, an, in the industrial world, uh, you don't want things uh, to fail and just sit there doing nothing. And what I mean by that is, and we've all done this, uh, it goes into an endless loop and the program can't do anything and it's locked up. Or the code just simply locks up and won't do anything. That in itself is bad, uh, especially in an industrial world where people live and die or get seriously injured. Now, in the world of our Pico and what we're doing, that could even be uh, something such as a sump pump in your home or another area of the home where you're worried about flooding. Maybe you've got uh, a condensation pump uh, on your furnace where you need to pump away the condensation that comes off the AC coil. Uh, that could cause property damage if not monitored or properly taken care of. And that's where the watchdog timer comes in. It's kind of like a, a last-ditch resort for the device itself to fix a problem in that it isn't running right, so I'm going to reboot and see if that'll fix it. Kind of what we do when Windows crashes. We turn it off, turn it back on, or unplug it, plug it back in, and magically the problem goes away. One of those deals. Uh, to utilize this feature is brilliantly simple. Uh, MicroPython made it very easy for us to use. Now, the way we're going to use it here um, on this Pico that I got on the bench, I'm going to use a button. And that'll allow me to, while it's running, to stop uh, replenishing that timer and therefore causing it to think there's something wrong, and then it'll reboot itself and then start running again. Very simple test and, and demonstration. We're going to look at the schematic. It's very, very simple here. We've got a Raspberry Pi Pico, like we always do. Uh, in our example, we're powering it with the USB port. On pin number 17, that'll go into one side of our switch. Other side of the switch comes back to a ground pin. Very simple. So in the code, we'll pull it up with a pull-up resistor so it's always on. And then when I press it, that'll draw it to zero and make it negative and therefore uh, activating the switch uh, for us. Now we'll look at the code. In the code here, we've got uh, some commentary up above explaining the feature and how it operates. Uh, we need, need to import uh, the machine library and especially the class WT, WDT, and that's Watchdog Timer. Uh, we're going to import a pin, uh, a couple of them. One will be an input, one will be an output, and then uh, the time library so we can do some sleeps here and there. We're going to utilize the onboard LED, uh, and that'll be, is always on pin 25, and we're setting that up as an output. And then I've got an object here called stall program. That'll be on machine numbers, machine pin number 17, GPIO pin 17, and that's pulled up with an pu internal pull up resistor. Uh, this is a short little routine here that just simply flashes the LED, the onboard LED, on and off uh, 10 times at a, a half a second interval. Uh, that way we can quickly recognize that the, the Raspberry Pi Pico reboot. 
This is how we uh, initialize our watchdog timer. We say anything, in this case, WDT equals capital WDTE or WTDT timeout equals 2000. 2000 milliseconds equals two seconds. So I'm setting that interval. We, it has to be replenished or fed every, within every two seconds or it's going to go into this reboot phase. Uh, so the next thing that we do is feed it. And that's all we got to do is issue this command, wdt.feed, every or within every two seconds, repeatedly. If you don't do that, it will reboot. So now we come down to our typical work loop, our endless loop. Uh, we're going to uh, sleep for a half a second, uh, just doing like it's doing some work or something. And then we're going to issue it a feed. That'll replenish the timer, and it's going to print thanks, because you should always thank somebody that feeds you. Now, here's where I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to be the, the problem. Uh, when I hold down uh, the button on the, the Pico, the, the yellow button, when I hold that down, this will see it that it's not on, meaning I've pulled it to ground by pressing the button. And then while that button is down, it's going to stay in a loop, that will just sleep for a tenth of a second. So I'm going to keep holding that down, forcing the program to stay in this loop and never being able to feed the timer. So let's see how that runs. I'll go ahead, click run. Now at this point, you'll notice that the program name is just simply watchdog.py. And that's what I'll provide to you for the source code. Uh, and I'll show you how to switch it over to main.py, and then we can do uh, an, a real-world test, so to speak. So we'll run it. We'll see the LED flashing. It just booted. Now it's actually running the program. We're feeding it every half a second, and it's saying thanks. So now I'm going to create a problem. I'm going to stall the program by pressing and holding the button, and the Pico just tried to reboot, and it can't because the program can't automatically restart. So now we'll take a look at how to make that happen. Now the best implementation is to go through and debug your program completely uh, before converting it into an auto start, kind of like what we just did here. It is working exactly as we want. So now I'm going to just go File, Save Copy, into the Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to call it main pi and at that point we've got a program in there that will auto run and it is this exact match to this program so what I'm going to do I'm going to unplug the uh, Pico from power plug it back in and then we should see it auto start and auto run and I tell you I will be a happy camper when they finally switch to USB-C on all these devices. I get it and I understand it. It's more economical and they are very uh, price conscious with their products. Uh, but boy, these things can really be frustrating at time. The micros. Okay, powered up. Uh, we see it flashing and it should just be happy now forever and ever until our program misbehaves, which I'll simulate by holding this button down. Uh-oh, it just rebooted. And now it's back to being happy again. And it continued to run forever and ever and ever, we would hope. Now, let's say uh, you need to go through, you found a problem in here. Um, make sure you're on the right COM port. If you're like me, you've got a bunch of Pico projects all active, and they all got a different COM port. So make sure you got one active here. And then just hit stop. And at that point, now we can go in, open. Oop, wrong one. I want to open on the Pico. And you may have to try it a few times doing the, the stop thing. You just got to catch it at the right time sometimes. And if you want to get rid of the main, do a delete. And now it's back to a normal Pico. Oh, okay, because now it's mad because it was trying to load main. 
All right, we'll close that, close that. I'm going to hit stop. And now, if I run now, it'll run watchdog.py, and we'll be back to running it the way we were before. Uh, but this should give you a, an idea of how you can work with uh, the watchdog timer and how it can make uh, your projects far more reliable that need to be made as reliable as possible. Now, I agree that uh, doing a self-reset uh, may not cure all problems, but it can cure a lot of them. And that's the purpose of this, is to at least give this device some opportunity to fix itself because it's run unattended and oftentimes far away from people and there's nobody monitoring it. So that's it for the Watchdog Timer. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.